And um, anyway, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. And if we mess up with the video again this week, for those of you who are watching at home, good morning. Uh, <laughs> it was sideways. And you know, it's funny, you can have the same setup and then suddenly it goes sideways. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, I feel like today um, is sort of like a wedding vow renewal. Now, we did one a while back. Um, we actually, it's not been too long ago. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, because we're talking about something that, that's something we've talked about before. And we're going to, we, we kind of launched in, I don't know if they, they threw up the thing yet. Uh, we're really kind of concentrating on gather, grow, and engage, which are three words we use a lot to describe what we feel like we need to do as a church, not the church universal. But I, they are church things. And it's weird because when you start to talk about the word gather, which most of us, when we think about gather, we think about the fact that we're gathered today. We often call this the worship gathering. And so it's like you're talking to people in church about the importance of church. That's kind of ironic. Come on now. Uh, It's like talking to teachers about the value of education. You know, yeah, uh, it, it's like going to a personal trainer and you know giving them a lecture on the importance of health. Um, it, it's like talking to an Apple fanboy about the awesomeness of an iPhone, or an Android uh, anti-Apple people the, uh, <laughs> about how much better Android is. You know, it's. I mean, if you if you want to, st- I know some of you sometimes want to stir up things on the internet. Just switch your phone type or ask, should I get an Apple or an Android? And I'm saying you will you will generate comments. Um, I've occasionally considered the switch, and trust me, the number of comments and things you get um, it is pretty, pretty intense. Um, and so we're talking about these three simple words, and I, I was trying to think of like, I, I usually have like one word that kind of sums up my thought for a sermon series. Uh, but really, when I was looking at these three, I thought, if I choose one word, or if I choose another couple of words, I think I'll obscure what I'm trying to get across. So I'm, we're actually just going to call it Gather, Grow, Engage, and hopefully that would burn it into your mind like a laser engraving it into your back of your phone. I don't know, whatever people engrave. With la- when I was a kid, we had like little engraver things, and like it was like, eh, eh, and you like put your name on everything, and it, and it never looked right because it was also like it was a vibrating metal thing. And so, you know, I, I have Jeff, you know, written on some things that are, very, very sloppy. But of course, that's kind of how I still write, so maybe it's just handwriting. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, <laughs> there's certain words and phrases that we just think of. Now, Taco Tuesday. Some of you are already making different lunch plans right now when I said that. I, and I, have, I have a shirt that says Taco Tuesday, and some of you may have seen it, and it has a piece of pizza on it. And people are like, Taco Tuesday, and they're like, but it's not Tuesday. And then they're like, and that's not a taco, but really it's kind of the same. It's a bready surface, there's meat and cheese, I'm just saying. It's the Italian taco, but uh, you know, I, I lo- most of us like the idea of Taco Tuesday. I was reading this article this week, and hopefully you'll see where we're getting to the content and the meaning of the sermon in a moment, but uh, you know, the, the term Taco Tuesday is actually trademarked. Yeah, <laughs> some, some of you know this. So it was actually first, uh, 1982, uh, was in New, uh, a place in New Jersey got it. A Wyoming-based chain called Taco John's, which most of us have been to. No, yeah. I'm kidding, you haven't probably. Uh, I said the trademark since 1989. So um, you can't actually use it. But here's the thing, LeBron James is trying to trademark Taco Tuesday. Now, I... I, I'm not anti-LeBron James, but when I think of LeBron James, I'm not thinking tacos. Is it Tuesday? And I'm not sure what, what they're... I mean, maybe, well, he just got some publicity out of it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, no one hears Taco Tuesday and thinks of LeBron Holdings. Um, you know, and then it kind of... The, the article had some interesting things like, you know, Nintendo uh, got a trademark on It's On Like Donkey Kong. Which makes sense, although it had been, despite it was decades old before Nintendo got, you know, a successful trademark. Now, but now they have the trademark. So now if you believe it is on, it cannot be on to the amount of Donkey Kong would be on unless you want to get a letter from Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> so there, there's these words and phrases that have meanings, but there's also words and phrases that lose meaning, right? Like how many of us say, you know, hand me a Kleenex? Anyone? 
Do you mean a Kleenex brand tissue, or do you mean just a tissue of some sort? Or you know, some of you are older, remember when we used to make photocopies, you'd Xerox something? Didn't matter if it was a Xerox machine. Some of you are laughing. Some of you, some of you remember like the paper you pressed, the carbon copy paper, and you had to press real hard. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> some of us are slightly older than others of us. Uh, <laughs> but you know, here's the thing. There's three words, but I think you can either hear them, maybe you'll see them on our literature, different things, and you kind of, kind of, it's easy to sort of forget the meaning, but it really is kind of the roots of what we're trying to do um, as a church. Now, Jesus, here's the thing, Jesus didn't actually say them. <gasps> Jesus didn't say, thou shalt gather, thou shalt grow, thou shalt engage. But, but hopefully you'll, you'll see, because he spoke English, and it was always Elizabethan English, we know that. The English was good enough for Jesus. Okay, those of you who don't know, that is totally joking. Uh, Jesus would have spoken probably Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek as well. Um, and the New Testament is written in Greek, but that's a whole another, another sermon, whole another series, and one that probably nobody wants. So you, you, don't, you don't want to go ahead and write that one down. Um, ultimately, though, Jesus came to save us. But part of that is Jesus then forms this new community that we call church. Uh, and it means we're going we're to see life differently. We're going to live life differently. We act differently to other people's. And so we see this in, um, in Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, and I know some of you thought I was going to Acts, didn't you? Now give it time. Give it time. Uh, but in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, starting in, in, in verse 11, it, it says... Uh, it says, starting verse 11, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. Now, uh, Gentiles, if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. Uh, it's kind of how it goes. Uh, used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it only affected their bodies and not their hearts. Now, Paul's saying, don't forget. Now, <laughs> and it's kind of, he's, he's, he's saying, you know, hey, re remember your life before Christ. This is a new thing. You've kind of been newly invited uh, into the kingdom. And, uh, you know, and a lot of times, you know, it's, the Israelites were often told to remember, remember. And so, you know, um, you know kind of sometimes it's easy, I think, the longer you're in a church or in your in faith to kind of not remember those things. And Paul's saying, hey, encourage. Now, uncircumcised heathens, you do not have to be a Greek scholar to realize that's probably you know, a pejorative term. Like, you don't, you don't like, come up to your wife, go, hi, you, un or maybe wouldn't go, oh, yeah, anyway. That's it. But, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't, you know, husband, hi, you, I'm sure you're he's in, you know, it's not a, a, a sort of, a, a term of endearment. It, it's slang. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, a harsh thing. And, you know, it says they're proud of their circumcision. Now, most of us, you know, it's awkward when you start talking about circumcision in a church, right? But, but uh, the Bible, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, has a lot to say about it. If you don't uh, study, uh, you know, circumcision, and I could give you all kinds of cool facts and history to it, but when you, when you study the New Testament, and I, I've been, you know, lucky enough to be able to teach some courses on this, uh, you know, and it, it, it's not on the actual how to do it, but, but the, the, the history and the theology behind it, there, there's this, you know, it, it becomes, it, it's this sign that Abraham has given, uh, and it becomes the, the mark, literally, <laughs> of the Jewish people and in a, ge in a Gentile culture. It's really what separated them from the Greek-speaking culture. And it becomes this big difference. And so it becomes sort of the outward sign of, of what it means uh, to be Jewish. And it's kind of like a wedding ring. Um, some of us actually, the, actually, they're not here, I was going to say happy anniversary. But, you know, <laughs> uh, you know I, I married someone last year who comes here. And, and Anyway, awkward moment. But, you know, you, when, you usually I say, when I do a wedding, you know, we, a lot of us, most of us wear rings, and we kind of, we kind of say something, it's like an outward sign uh, of this covenant, and so that's what, what it was. It's kind of like baptism. You know, baptism itself is this outward sign of something. You're not saved because you were baptized, right? It's not, you know, taking a bath doesn't make you right with God, but it's this symbolic act that we perform in order to show this inclusion of Christ. And, you know, it says if you are proud... Now, people of faith tend to get proud, if we're honest, right? Anyone know anyone who is at church for a while and starts getting proud of who they are? Now, there's good pride and bad pride here, right? You know, it's good to be, you know, uh, you know pride of a job well done, but, but sometimes we can get a little, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, 
too kind of proud. I, I, I remember working, I've worked in some larger churches, a lot of little different churches. I always worked as a youth pastor, which is a great training for a lot of things. And one of the cool things about being a youth pastor at a church is whenever any kid misbehaves, you get pulled into it. Uh, it doesn't even matter if they're kids who go to your church. You know, I, I, like, I, know, I got to the point where I had a local restaurant calling me because they had problems with kids. And I'm like, they're not even... Our kids, they just walked through our parking lot, but somehow I'm responsible for them. And I, I remember going, well, it's better I go out there than the police. Uh, and I met a lot of great kids that way. Uh, but, you know, you know, I remember, you know, sometimes kids would be skating. And people would be like, that's God's parking lot. They need to have respect. And I'm like thinking, I'd, I knew some of you when you were kids. And you did not have a lot of respect for God's parking lot or anything else. And, but, you know, we can get sort of weirdly religious. And I remember on Facebook not long ago, I had a friend rant about people stealing. Like, he got mad. Basically, some kids, I'm not justifying kids stealing stuff. Like, so if any of you are teenagers, you're not like, oh, this is Jeff's permission for us to go steal some stuff. But, you know, most of us have kind of left your car unlocked at night, and then in the morning found your door open and all your change missing and your radio. I remember when my Civic, they took my radio, which they did more damage than the radio was worth. So now I just tape a 20 on the dash, and I'm like, you know, just take the 20, leave the radio. It's not worth 20 bucks. Uh, <laughs> and so I don't really do that, but you, you get what I mean. But yeah, I'm Nobody likes getting stolen from. I, 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 I totally get it. But I remember this person, they were posted about these kids, da, 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 they need to do this and this to these kids. Da, da. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember you in high school. I literally remember you stealing stuff. But, <laughs> but you know, the longer and the further you're away from it, and, and so, but sometimes people can kind of get a little too uh, <laughs> proud. Um, but, you know, and Christians do that. We, oh, you know, it's, it's just, it's easy to. Anyway, so in, but verse 12, in those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. You did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. Not a good place to be, right? Without God, without hope. Uh, you know, it, it, it says, um, but now... You have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now have you been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. And, and, and here's the thing. All of us used to not be followers of Jesus. Whether you're one now or not is, you know, kind of on you. But, but we don't start off as followers. My kids aren't, like, automatically grandfathered in. You know, <laughs> oh, well, dad followed Jesus, so you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm, I'm the child of God, so they're grandkids of God. No, that's not how it works. You know, we have to, it, it's this first person thing. Now, here's like some of us accept Christ at a very young age, though, right? You have the most boring testimony ever. When I was four, I was convicted of my horrible sin. Like, what did you like? Steal someone's glue stick? I mean, uh, but that's great. I, I praise God for a boring testimony. Uh, but, you know, some of us have crazy lives. You know, and, and I, you know, and some, I, I have some friends. I'm like, whoa, that's mind blowing. You never would have seen that in you. And some of us, oh, that's a whole other side story. Love to brag about our crazy lives before Christ. But again, that's a whole other thing. But here's all are invited in. Uh, and, and so we're, we're invited in, um, and, and, you know, ultimately Jesus comes, and you know, we're going to work Luke back in here, but you know, Luke 15, which I've preached on numerous occasions, and I promise you I will preach on numerous other occasions, but not today. I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, and so in Luke 15, you know, Jesus, you know, he, he gets criticized, and Jesus gets criticized generally for what? hanging out with the wrong people and everything. And Jesus, Jesus talks in Luke 15. He tells three stories. He said, you know, if you had a, if you had a hundred lost sheep and one, are gone, one gets lost, what do you do? You go out and find the sheep. You know, you, you leave the 99, you go to the one. And he, and he tells the story. He goes, hey, woman had, you know, 10 coins. She lost one. She swept the house. She cleaned everywhere. And then she was excited and told the neighbors when she found it, right? Because it was something of value and she found it. You know, you may have 10, but if you lose one, you want that. If you have, you know... Uh, Ten times hundred thousand dollars, and you lose a hundred. You're still looking hard for that hundred, right? Unless you like you're just rolling in it or something. But the rest of us are, you know, looking for that hundred. Uh, you know, and then he tells the story, which is commonly called the prodigal son. And he has the man has two sons. One runs off and is lost, 
and though there's all kinds of cool levels of stuff with that son who stays because he appears to be lost even though he stayed home. But, you know, the whole point of the story is God's waiting out, waiting for this son to come back, and then there's this, you know, rejoicing and partying. And ultimately, God comes because he wants us to have a relationship with him. God, God longs for us to, to be in a relationship with us, and you start off kind of, we, we go our own way, we do our own thing. I love that song we, we sang earlier, the reckless love of God. Now, some of us might be going, well, I don't like the word reckless because this or that, and that's okay. But I, I love the, the kind of, I think of reckless as, I've done a lot of reckless things in my life. Anyone? Yeah. Like, I remember, like, we were on some really steep hills with a bike one time, and it was like, you know, my, my brakes were like, couldn't stop me, so I just let go of them and just, <laughs> you know, reckless. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was wrecked less that day and didn't wreck. But, you know, there's this, you know, I remember sledding as a kid. Oh, we didn't have, it seemed like the hills were big, but we're in Delaware, so the hills, we, but, you know, you kind of, I remember a skateboard accident where I was reckless, but I was unfortunately wreckful that day. Um, but it's kind of this, this wild abandon uh, of love of God that, that pulls us in. And so that's the kind of, God has this love for us because God wants us to have this relationship with him. It says 14, for Christ himself brought us peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. And so there was this separation between the Jewish people, God's chosen people. You know, the, Jesus was Jewish. You know, he, he comes through the, those people. But then, you know, it, it's sort of not everyone becomes Jewish. It's Jesus comes for everybody. Uh, and that's, you know, it, it's this amazing thing. It says, he alone is our peace. You know, and a lot of us, we look for things that bring us peace. We, we stuff ourselves with money and jobs, relationships. You know, we, many of us look for peace with God because we want to outweigh our good with our bad. You know, like, I help old ladies across the street, so I'm good. Well, you're a horrible driver. Oh, no, you're bad. You know, <laughs> and we, we try to balance it out, all that thing. But ultimately, we're made right with God purely by his grace. And, but by this grace, then, we have this relationship with God, and we're made right with him. And, you know, he is our peace. You know, there's this peace between uh, man and God, and then there's this peace between the Jews and Gentiles. There's no hostility, hate. Now, hate is going to hate. Hate, 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 hate. Uh, but <laughs> followers of Christ, then, what it means if you're a follower and a disciple of Jesus means you love. We live differently because of that. Paul puts it this way in Galatians 3.28 which I love. Um, I started, like, I, I know I probably don't look like the kind of person who writes on real paper. I don't know. But I have this journal, and I was, like, working things out. And I had, like, a bazillion scriptures I wanted to use today. I'm limiting it to a few. And, uh, but and it's because, you know, I know you don't want, like, a five-hour sermon. I mean, some of you do. Probably the person at home watching, no, you don't. Okay, that's, <laughs> is she speaking for everyone? No five-hour sermon? Okay. <laughs> People are like, you can preach a five-hour sermon, but I'm leaving it 47 minutes. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, Paul says it this way in Galatians 3.28, which is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or and female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male nor female, all are one in Christ Jesus. You know, and, and these are big divides in the ancient society. It, 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 Jesus, you know, Paul is saying, hey, these things don't matter anymore. You know, and, and all that separates us, the things that, that we divide, because we do that, right? Like, it's like in high school, you have different groups. I don't know if they still have it, but it's like you have the band geeks, you have the people who study, you have, you know, the, the jocks, and, you know, and, you know, there's, I don't know, there's probably a bazillion different groups now, and it's... I don't hang out with kids anymore. I have kids. I'll let them tell me later. But you know, we kind of naturally sort of divide ourselves and look different and do different things. But you know, Jesus you know, comes, and you know, if, if you kind of picture those in like society, all those groups break down because we're one in Jesus. And, and so that means you know, it's just this wall of hostility. The wall is separated. Um, you know, the Jews and the Gentiles in the temple, it, it's broken down. And, and so you picture like a, a, a fence with like razor wire, <laughs> You know, something you couldn't go over, and it gets broken. It, it, it no longer matters. The things that separate us don't matter in Jesus. Um, verse 15 says, He did this by ending the, the system of law and its commandments and regulations. He made peace between the Jews and the Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from 
the two groups. Now, I picture Frankenstein immediately when I read that, um, but that's not what he's talking about. Some of you know the, um, actually, the you know, who wrote it? It was like Shelley and it was Frank. Anyway, <laughs> but I, I picture like the monster with the little plugs in their neck. I don't know. That's how I picture it. Uh, but, you know, it, it, your thing is, like, it's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, some of you, uh, you don't like peanut butter and jelly? Something's wrong with you. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly is this, I, 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 I'm slightly older than elementary school. Man, I still love me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Can I get an amen from everyone else? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like, you know, peanut butter and, and chocolate. You know, uh, there we go. Like the inventor of the Reese's peanut butter cup should have gotten some sort of, you know, uh, uh, sainthood. You know, some sort of award. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And here, bacon in anything, right? I mean, you take some vegetarian lasagna, spread bacon on it. It is so good. Um, but it's, you know, taking two different things, putting it together. And it's this beautiful thing. That's the church. You know, and so you take peanut butter and jelly. Sorry. <laughs> We, you get the church. You, you take peanut butter and chocolate, two different things, taste great, but together, great. Even better, bacon and anything. And so it says, together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. And so both groups are made right with God through Christ. It says, he brought the good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and the peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. And we have this, this privilege, this right relationship with God. It says that. So now you are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming the holy temple for the Lord. Through you Gentiles are all, <laughs> through him you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. And so all these things that divide us. Now, we live in a divisive time in America. Can I get an anti-amen? <laughs> it would be like, be women? I don't know. I don't know. I was trying to think what anti-amen would be. I remember when I was first like, kind of new to the like, church thing, and I was like, I noticed people would shout out things like hallelujah and amen, and I was trying to figure it out. And so I remember the pastor was preaching about like, all this horrible stuff going on, and I'm like, Amen! And I'm like, uh, kind of from the looks, I was like, okay, I didn't get it right. I don't know. When am I supposed to do the amen things? Anyone else ever, you know, you, okay, just me. Uh, <laughs> if you shout it here, we'll just kind of go, okay, if it was from the awkward place. But, you know, here, things divide us, right? And, and that's why I encourage you to vote, but we won't really talk politics here. We'll let you kind of do that on your own, and sometimes the men's group will have some interesting discussions. But the, all kinds of things divide us. Now, when I think of people... Don't do it. <laughs> I'm just saying, someone's wearing Eagles jersey. Someone in the back's wearing a Steelers jersey. Uh, now, who are the Bills playing today again? The Jets. Do we have a Jets fan? Do we have a Jets fan? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, no Jets fans here. Um, Benny? Benny? Are the Jets here? Uh, anyway. Uh, anyway. You know, Justin and I, because I, I usually use an example for this, have a few things anti in common. I went to Caesar Rodney. I bleed blue and gold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Justin, he's a Dover guy. If you're not from here, that's a slightly big rivalry. Although at CR, it's now become like... Um, you know, in the middle school, we're trying to tell them Dover's the rival. you got to hate Dover. No, sorry. But they're like, you know, Pulse to Weight versus Pfeiffer is the big rivalry. I'm like, you're going to be the same team next year. Stop it. Um, okay. I happened to go to a university called the University of Pittsburgh. Anyone want to guess where Justin went? Penn State. Because you see his Penn State stuff all the time. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I use an iPhone. <laughs> You can't get more opposed in the flesh, natural divisions, than Justin and I. But I love Justin. 
He's my brother in Christ. And the, the fact that we're friends can only be attributed to Jesus. Because <laughs> I'm not saying that because he's a bad person. But there's so many other human divisions. And sometimes in, the, the cool thing about gathering as church is you'll become connected to people who are very different than you. Because the unifying factor is not where we went to school. It's not maybe where we ended up living. Uh, it's not that we have a common friend who shows up at your house at 2 a.m. and makes waffles. But <laughs> that's just how I met him, common friend, long story. But the common thing is Christ. And Christ unites us. And the church is, I, I've said this before, a, a band of natural enemies who love each other for Jesus' sake. Most of us, you know, may not have hung out with everyone else who is here just on your own because there are so many divisions. But what makes church church is when we're natural enemies, not natural friends, but when we come together, you know, the, the only thing we have in common sometimes is Jesus, but that's enough. Jesus is what unites us. And you know, it says Jesus is the cornerstone. You know, he, he, you know he, he's the, the cornerstone was the most important stone in a new building. It's, you know, it, it, it's proper placement makes everything, you know, natural and level. And, you know, I don't do much, um, you know, uh, basinry, but, you know, it, it's kind of, if, if you see, a, 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 you know, the, it's like the foundation stone of everything. Um, and I remember one time I had a friend who was like talking to me about something else and, you know, he's like, well, is that, does their Christianity have, you know, Jesus? And I'm like, well, without... Jesus, it's just eanity. It can't be Christianity. Uh, so yes, that one would have it. Uh, <laughs> but you know, ultimately, Jesus is the foundation. And if you if you miss that part, church can be community. Church can gather. But what makes Christian community different is there's this unity, not based on who we are or what we do or cool things we like, but it's based on the fact. You know, Jesus came, he saved us, and now we're on the same team. We often use the hashtag Team Jesus. So I even have a hash. I should have worn my hashtag Team Jesus shirt today. Uh, and, and that's really, you know, what makes us what we are. Now, so what does community look like when it gets lived out? Now we're in Acts 2, for some of you who are wondering if I was going to get there. Now, if you've, if you've never read the book of Acts, we actually did a series through parts of it. Uh, I don't think we ever finished it. We were going to do part two and haven't gotten to it yet. So look for part two in 2022. I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But, uh, you know, it, you know it, it, the, the context, you know, if, if you've studied you know, Easter and, you know, Jesus comes back from the dead, it's sort of this big surprise for the disciples, even though Jesus constantly said, hey, I'm, I, I'm going to die, I'm going to come back. And they're just like, uh-huh. No, and so he, he does, and there's this, you know, uh, uh, he comes back, he tells him to wait for, for, for uh, the Holy Spirit, and then at Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit comes in this powerful way, Peter preaches boldly, 3,000 people come to believe, uh, so that's the context, you can read this in, Act, in the book of Acts, and it says this in verse, starting in verse 42, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles formed, uh, performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the bleeper, ble, believers, <laughs> believers uh, met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. And all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So they went house to house. I know some people read this and it's interesting to kind of see the history of different kind of interpretations. And they, is this like the new hippie community because people are selling stuff? You know, are we all supposed to join a commune? I had a friend who in the 70s joined a Christian commune. I'm not sure. <laughs> they were like, kind of all had everything, you know, together. Uh, there's the Hutterites. You know, you guys, most of you know. Mennonites or Amish, the Hutterites are like even more like extreme. <laughs> they, they own all their stuff together and they have giant communal meals. I kind of want to go to the meal. Can I just go to the meal? <laughs> but uh, some of you know what I mean. Uh, but um, 
you know, and, and so, you know, it's not saying we have to like sell all our stuff, but there's this new community. And, and so, and they, they you know, <laughs> it, it just, it, it lives a different way because of Jesus. And, and so, you know, the original Christian, Christian community that we're talking about here in Acts, it's known for its devotion to Christ, teachings, love for one another, because when you really love one another, you'll sacrifice, you'll sell stuff to support one another. Uh, now, here, that was what the original church was known for. What are churches known for today? And don't answer out loud, because I'm afraid of what you'll say. <laughs> A few churches maybe aren't known for good things. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of this is a question. Also, don't answer this one because I'm like, what is deep water known for? I had someone recently in my office who like was very anti deep water, uh, but um, they but it was interesting. Yeah, well, why'd you come talk to me then? But <laughs> even in the midst of it, though, they're kind of like, yeah, but you guys are known for good stuff <laughs> because you know. Honestly, we, we do our best as a church, and this isn't like Pat Deepwater on the back day or anything, but we really, we try to live out this Jesus stuff, right? And, and so, you know, this week, you know, we fed the homeless three times. You know, we, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I guess we just like a late, long weekend people. You know, it's like we, we do things to, to feed the hungry. Uh, you know, I, not this week we didn't do it, but other weeks we've gone and helped people who have been, you know, injured, couldn't do something. We, we, we do stuff for people. We, we, whenever we see a need, we try to fill it. And we don't always post pictures on Instagram of everything because you obviously you don't want to embarrass people. On any given week, we're delivering food to people who are hungry. Uh, and so there's a lot of good we do. And, and I think those are important things that we do because ultimately we need to show love for one another. And, and that means people in the church, but also means people who aren't a part of the church. And John 13 says this, Jesus speaks, says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, I think it's funny that Jesus has to tell us to love one another. You know why I think Jesus has to tell us to love one another? Yeah, naturally, it's a hard sometimes, right? Some of you are very difficult to love. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, when you... Like, family is a funny thing, right? Because you love your family, and sometimes you also want to um, not love your family. <laughs> I don't know what you said, and I don't know if I want to go back to that. <laughs> but, you know, it can be difficult if, if, to, to love one another with our family. It can be difficult even in the church to love one another. There's people, we call them EGRs, extra grace required, because you struggle. With not, we're not talking the valve on the car, but, but it can be struggle. Everyone can... Most of you, when I say extra grace required, you think of someone, right? Yeah. If you're not thinking of someone, we're all thinking of you. Um, <laughs> because it can be difficult. It can be difficult to love. But that's what makes Christian community Christian community. It's love. You know, um, have you ever heard, heard someone say something to the effect of, I, uh, you know, I love Jesus, but I hate the church? Now, one thing, if you come to me and say, you know, Jeff, I love you, but I hate Denise, we are not going to have the same relationship as you may want, because um, my first reaction is to defend my bride. We are the bride of Christ. So if you're a Christian and saying that, I get it, because it could be a struggle. But really, you know, the bride of Christ is the church. It can be tough to love the other members of the church sometimes, but we need to Love the church. Uh, and, and, you know, I think sometimes why people think that way, and a lot of times people who are not a part of the body of Christ feel that way, because if we're honest, sometimes people are hard to love. And, and you know, it, it, you know it, and it's easy, I think, sometimes the church, and I hate to, you know, just bash the church, because we are the church, but some parts of it sometimes to make Christianity out of just a bunch of rules. And, and, and it's easy sometimes to see parts of the church that don't exhibit love to people. You know, and so we need to love people like Christ loved. Uh, but, but, you know, ultimately, you know, Jesus said some challenging things. We just walked through the Sermon on the Mount. That's a challenging piece of Scripture. And I'll bet if more people tried to live out that Sermon on the Mount... You know, I, I think people's perception of the church might sometimes change. Now, some people are just going to hate because 
Hater's going to hate, 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 hate. But, um, and, and, okay, uh, another, another phrase is, you know, we, we've said, you know, don't go to church, be the church. Now, I actually like that one, but it's not completely true, right? Uh, because, you know, it, it's, it's true, but you can't be the church if you don't gather. Uh, you know, and, and I often, I, I, I like trip over my words to not say, meet me at the church. I'll be like, I'm at the church building, you know, it's like, because remember you grow up, you know, uh, here's the church, here's the steeple, open up, see all the people. You know, it's just, it's, it's a lie from the devil. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fun to do with your kids, but it's like, here's a church building, here's a steeple that some churches have, and here's the church inside. I, 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 lo- I am so annoying to people, and I enjoy it. Um, some of you know what I mean, because I'm annoying to you. But, you know, people, I, I'm often someplace, and someone finds out what I do, and they're like, where's your church? I'm like, ah, eh, probably most of them are working today. Um, they're like, uh, sometimes it takes them a while to regroup, and then they're like, I mean, like, where do you meet? And I'm like, oh, well, we meet in homes, but we also meet in this building, you know. <laughs> and I'll, then I kind of, I, I finally tell them. But I, I love to mess with them. One, because I'm a jerk, and I love to mess with people. Some of you know that. But two, it's a theological point that's important. Uh, you know, when, when the kids were little, we never said we're going to church. I, we might say we're going to have church, you know, I don't know. We might say we're going to meet with the church, but we'd, we'd be very careful because, and I love this building. Anyone like this building? Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Pass the plate around again. Uh, you know, we, we like this building. We, we like where we meet. And places are important, but what makes the church is not the building. It's people. You know, it's, you know, uh, and so church is this gathering thing. And, and truth is, I think a lot about this. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, where we find community um, in, in our society. It used to be kind of your neighborhood, you felt community. Anyone live in a neighborhood where you're all friends? That's kind of odd now. Like maybe some, you know, I remember as a kid, um, I, I specifically remember a friend of mine, um, and some of you know him, but uh, I, I remember, uh, and I actually did her funeral years ago, and, and so I remember, I, I told this story, I remember coming out one time into my kitchen, and my neighbor his mom, uh, well, she was my neighbor too, she was just sitting at the kitchen table. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you are here. She's like, yeah, I knocked on the door. Your mom didn't answer, um, so I'm just sitting down. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll tell her you're here. Uh, <laughs> That's weird today, right? Like, uh, some of you are like freaked out already. You're like, if you just came out in your neighbor's city, but we had the kind of neighborhood growing up where we were in and out of each other's houses. Some of you were older might remember that kind of thing. Again, weird now. That we like are locking our door, dead bolting it, and like making sure who's outside, who's outside. But, <laughs> you know, but that kind of community, you, 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 I think we used to have it, you know, in our neighborhoods. It's a little harder now. Uh, a lot of us find it around sports, right? Now, some of you are wearing a particular jersey. Actually, we got two of them today. My, my son wanted me to wear the Steelers jersey, but I didn't want to divide on, on the day where we're trying to talk about unity. So I, I guess I could have worn generic football jersey, but then someone wouldn't like football. We'd get a fight over that. But uh, here's the thing. <laughs> you know, sports are crazy because you will, you will high-five or hug a total stranger because they're wearing the same jersey as you. You've got community, and you don't even know the person. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people who are in the military, we have a lot of military folks. There's a community that you have in the military. You, you know, you've, you know it's, it's funny, like, you know, I'll find out, you know, we, like we have like a, a guy who's, who's a Marine, and we have another guy who's a Marine. I'll usually introduce them, and they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, this, this camaraderie, and then they pick on the Army guys, who pick on the Army. You know, uh, but we can't pick on them. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's some of this, like, fratori- fratori- fraternities. That's it's like a new, that's apparently a co-ed fraternity, a fraternity. Um, you know, fraternity, sorority, that's what I was trying to say. You know, we, you know some people find connection in there. I, I didn't do that, that frat thing. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, family, you know, uh, I think work. Sometimes you have connection with people at work. Sometimes you hate the people you work with. I think a lot of times gyms. You, you find a lot of community. It's just funny. I was trying to work out the other day. I need to get earbuds or something. Everyone wanted to talk to me, and I only had like 35 minutes to like lift. I'm like trying to talk while I'm lifting and doing something. I'm a talkative person, which I know it's probably my, my problem. But you know, you see certain people in the gym all the time, and then you kind of become friends with them. And you know, it's easier sometimes to go to the gym if you're meeting somebody. You know, sometimes it's like a coffee shop you hang out in. There's different places. Like, there's this one guy, I see him around sometimes. I'm like, where did I know that guy? I'm like, oh yeah, I used to sit next to him at a coffee shop. I don't actually know 
his name. <laughs> and so there, there's all these things that, you know, places we find community. Uh, you know, <laughs> all these are good. We should love our neighbors. We should love those at the gym. But we also have to make sure that church is a place where people can find community. Yeah, and so, you know, church is a place where people can connect with, with, with other people. Um, and most of us, I think, we naturally desire relationships. Um, you, you ever see the movie Castaway with yes. Tom Hanks? That was pretty strong. Y'all are some Tom Hanks loving people. Uh, uh, you know, but, um, you know, I, I, I like the movie, but it's kind of funny. It, you know, anyone see the red Jeep memes for, the, for Dorian, the, you know, tornado? Uh, there was one with, like, Tom Hanks on the beach and everything. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, they have, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, most of us would love to someday, like, live on a beautiful um, tropical island. It seems like paradise, Right. But, you know, if you watch the movie, one, it's a small island, so maybe that's what drove him nuts, but also there was nobody else there. So he's like talking to a volleyball, which is like a deep theological thing, not talking to the volleyball, but the fact that we need community. We're made to be, that's why he risks himself. All he needed there was a dentist, and he would have been fine. Um, if you saw that scene with the ice skate, oh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, and most of you, anyone ever go to the movies? Okay, I, I know you go. You post every time you eat or go to the movies. Uh, <laughs> I love you, though. Uh, but <laughs> okay. Anyone go to the movies alone? A couple people? Okay. Who prefers to go to the movie with somebody else? Probably most of us. Which is funny because you shouldn't talk in the movie theater, right? <laughs> but we still go to the movies with somebody. We can talk afterwards. I, but I, I, th- I think it all speaks to, we have this natural want for relationships, connection. And, and, and so, you know, uh, you know we're, I, and I think part of this is we're made to be in relationships. And, and, you know, we're made as the church, and again, not the church building, we're talking about people, to be in connection and community with other people. Uh, and what makes Christian, you know, community different is ultimately Jesus is at the center of it. You, know, you can go bowling to go bowling. I like to go bowling. Uh, I even have my own bowling ball. I found it floating in the lake, um, which is a whole other story. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you can go to the gym and connect with people, and that's great. And, uh, and, you know, but Christian community, what it means is it's centered on Christ. It's the thing that unifies us. It's a, being a community means sometimes you're friends with people who aren't like you. And that's what Christian community is. Uh, being part of the church gives opportunity for real purposeful friendships more than any other organizations. God set this thing up. You know, you can play football by yourself, but it's more fun being on a team. You know, you, you can play tuba by yourself, but it's more fun if people come watch the band, right? Or you have the uh, whole band. And, and so when we talk about gathering, too, there's purpose to why we gather. Uh, you know, it's a lot like, you know, anyone ever go on a cruise ship? What do you do on a cruise ship? Eat, and then rest from eating. So you can eat again. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much, it's just, you know, gluttony on a boat. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, on a cruise ship, there's kind of like, you just kind of do whatever you want. You know, and you don't, your real job is to have fun and enjoy yourself. And so I think sometimes people kind of think of Christianity as like a cruise ship. You just come, enjoy the buffets, and hang out. I think Christianity is more like a battleship. Now, I've been on a battleship. I've played the game battleship. Uh, but I've never been on a real battleship. But, you know, I, I picture from what I know, and some of you have been on maybe a battleship, you know, there's purpose to a battleship. They're there for battle. Everyone's got a job and a function in, in order to, to do what they're doing. And that's, I think Christianity is a lot more like the battleship. We have this purpose to our community, and we're going to be kind of nail, hitting that the next couple of weeks as we, as we work through this, you know. Uh, but, you know, what it, you know, to gather, when I say that word, what does it mean for you? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think so, <laughs> you know, for some of us, gathering can be just the thing that keeps us alive. Not physically alive, like we're going to take your kidney or anything. But there's, uh, you know, 
there, there's a story, this pastor goes to this guy's house, and, you know, guy hasn't been to church in a while, and uh, so the pastor goes over, and the guy's like, I'm not going to talk, I'll make the pastor say something. So the pastor sits down, and the pastor's like, well, I'm not going to say anything. So they just sit there in silence for a long time, and they sit, they're sitting by the fire. And, and so at some point, the pastor reaches out and grabs a coal out of the fire and sets it down on the, you know, on the, the tile there, and you wait a long time. If you ever set a coal out, what happens? Eventually goes out, goes black. He picks it back up, puts it in the fire. He glows red. Pastor gets up, starts out the door. And the guy's like, I understand, Pastor. I'll be back next week. Uh, <laughs> in that, our fire sometimes burns out when we're not with others. And so it's, it's a challenge sometimes, if we're honest. We can be real here. It's a challenge to be a Christian sometimes, right? I still think it's easier than the alternative, but it's a challenge to keep that fire burning. And part of what church is, is this fellowship where, you know, it helps us burn brighter together. Um, and some of us aren't going to make it without the others. Um, and some of us need to be here, and again, I'm preaching church to people at church, in order to encourage others in the faith. Uh, you know, we, we have this responsibility to love and care for others and pull them along in this relationship with Christ. And, um, you know, the Sunday gathering is really, it's important to come together uh, and, and connect. And now here, I'm going to challenge you, because I usually make Justin challenge you to say this during the announcements. I'm always like, you know, we have a notes for announcements, you know, and one of the things always says, like, meet somebody new. Who met somebody new today? One person. Okay, well, you did. That's, you, thanks for coming. <laughs> I met you earlier. That's good. I, and I met someone new. Okay, who met someone new last week? Man, awkward. <laughs> One? Okay. Who met someone new two weeks ago? You're like, I don't remember two weeks ago. I didn't. Okay, 19 weeks ago. Who? No, okay. <laughs> it's a challenge. I'll be... Like, it was funny, we were doing something, we were doing something on personality, I took a little survey in the Facebook group one time, and I realized, now, most of our church, if we're, I don't know what the percentages are in society, a, a lot of us are introverts. Now, I hate the word introvert, because I think it sometimes has a negative sense to it, but the truth is, a lot of us are great people, great when we get to know, but some of us are not the most outgoing, Right? And that's okay, that's the way God made you, but here I want to challenge you to stretch a little before he gets to it to tell you, you know, meet somebody new. Sometimes people are visiting the church, you know, this church that we do, and they're like, man, I didn't really, you know, connect with anyone, and they feel like, does anybody like me? But <laughs> it's really, they just didn't get reached out to. While we were preaching, somebody came in the back door, none of you noticed them, and then they turned around and left. Anyone notice that? That was today, during the sermon. <laughs> I couldn't, because it would be awkward if I called him out. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's awkward. And I'm, if, you, if you're listening online, please come back. But, <laughs> there, you know, you, it's easy to come in. And if you don't feel connected, it's easy to walk out. And, and that's why we need connection um, in, in church. Uh, now, it's a two-way street, though, too. You know, because some people are like, oh, no one ever talked to me. And I remember I worked at a larger church, and we, we figured out where the person actually sat, and we're like, well, I actually happen to know you were sitting by other guests. <laughs> so, yeah, no, no one reached out to me. That's because you happened to be surrounded next to guests, too, which has happened to us, too. We had people not connect with anyone. Like, the people in front of me didn't say hi to me. I'm like, well, they're new, too. So it's a two-way street. You know, you need to connect, too. But, but connection is important when we gather. Well, um, we, and, and, um you know, and we, and we create all kinds of opportunities. I'm working on the new, uh, the, the small groups. Sheet. You know, we have community groups. We have discipleship groups. We have different ways to try to help people connect. And honestly, some of us, even some of us who are listening today, you know, we have people who are right now stocking shelves in a, in a store uh, listening to the sermon because they can't go to, 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 to this at this time. You know, but if you can't gather here, you need to create other opportunities and places to gather. And so we have, like, for instance, the men's Bible study. And I cooked breakfast this week, so there was Scrapple. Uh, some of you that excited, some of you are not excited by that. <laughs> but, but, you know, we, we need connection. Um, uh, you, know, uh, you may not know everyone, but you need to know someone. 
And so I challenge you, meet somebody new. Uh, find community, create community, uh, make, the most, make every opportunity for community. Uh, you know, and ultimately, we want to be who God is calling you to be in a relationship with him. And let's be the church that God is calling us to be as we build relationships and connect with other people. You know, as the worship team comes back to play, uh, I would encourage you, we have these connection cards each week. Uh, you know, feel free, uh, fill this out if you 